In this video, we're going to talk about how to decode the VIN number on your EM1, where to locate the VIN numbers on your EM1, and interesting things that you need to know about your EM1. Stay tuned and we'll get right to it. So this is a vehicle identification number decoder. I was unable to find one online specific for an EM1, so I made my own. And so this is how you would read all EM1 VIN numbers, and it's actually pretty simple. So starting from uh, position number one, all EM1s, I believe, will all have a one there. They will not have a two for Honda of Canada. So all EM1s in position 1 will say 1 Honda of America. Position 2 is Honda manufacturing. All Hondas will have that in position 2. This is for identification, world identification I guess. It's required by automotive manufacturers to put that there. The third position will also be the same if it's a passenger car. All the positions all the way up to number 9 will be I believe exactly the same for all EM1s whether they're Canadian or American. Position number four through six is to signify what your car is and that's the special part of it there on the VIN number EM1. That's what everybody goes crazy about. EM1 basically stands for Civic Two Door Coupe with a 1.6 liter B16 A2 dual overhead cam engine. That's all EM1 stands for. Position seven, like a lot of these numbers in the first nine positions are actually redundant and here's why. So here's number, position number seven is a one. All EM1s will have that same one there. Uh, describing once again that it's a two door coupe and it was only offered with a manual transmission. Next up is position number eight, which signifies the, the grade of the vehicle. Uh, in this case, it's a two door once again uh, repeating itself uh, but this time it specifies that it's an SI slash SIR and I know a lot of you guys in the United States all wonder why your your insurance or registration papers say SI slash SIR well that's the reason why and a little bit more as we go along as to the reason why that says that position number nine it's a it's a check digit and I don't fully understand what that is and I'm not sure if all EM1s will have a four there. So far the ones that I've run across are all a four. Four basically means it's a manual with AC or basically a, a full load car. Position number 10 so this is where it will change. It could either be an X there or a Y. The X will signify built in 1999 and the Y signifies built in 2000. Position number 11 is the plant. They'll all be the same. It should just be an L there for East Liberty, Ohio, United States of America. Position number 12, I put the H there for Alliston, Ontario, Canada, but it's not likely you'll see that in any EM1 VIN because they weren't manufactured there. Position number 12 this is where it signifies the country where it was manufactured for so where the final destination of the car is going to end up for sale what country and there's only two numbers that will be there so if you have a Canadian car it should be an 8 there and if you have an American SI then it should be a 0 positions 13 through 17 is a production sequence number now apparently it has no particular order so that basically covers that there's no particular order so the numbers are, I don't know, at random. Nonetheless, all the Canadian models, they share the same VIN as the USA, except that their sequence numbers start with eight and then follow with five zeros. It's also important to note that in the USA, positions 13 to 17 must be a number, whereas position 12 may be either a letter or a number. So position eight must be a number five to be an SIR or a special Honda car. Any Honda with a VIN that has a five in position eight that means you have something special whether it be an accord or a prelude or a civic sedan and, and i believe that goes back pretty much through all years so that's definitely an important one you guys position number eight if it's a five you have a special honda so that pretty much covers how you decode the vin for an em1 it's very simple i'm surprised that there's no information on it or a chart like this so i hope you guys like it and i hope it's a valuable piece of information for you so next up i've got some video footage of how to load 
locate your VIN numbers on your EM1. First off, I'd like to just say that the best sources for this information were the Golden Era Honda's organization, Wikipedia. And if you guys want to decode any other Honda VINs, there's an extensive platform to do that on. It's called Wikibooks. I guess it's part of Wikipedia. So if you go into Wikibooks, they have a VIN decoder thing online there and it's quite extensive. It covers all makes, models, years, etc. So definitely check that out. It's definitely some good information if you really want to dig deep into this stuff. So yeah, let's uh, let's check out where we can find all these VIN numbers on an EM1. This is where you'll find your VIN number. It's on every panel. The one that's supposed to be inside the door jam, your capacities, and your paint code. Now on the inside of the driver's door here, we got another one of those VIN numbers. There'll be another one on the passenger's door. There's the other one on the other side, on the passenger side, door jam. There's the other one on the driver, passenger side, door. There's the one on the rear bumper. There's the one on the trunk lid. Here's the other one on the driver's side, uh, wind, lower windshield. Then in here is the stamp fin on the firewall. There's the other VIN number stamp on, or sticker on the fender, left fender. There's the other one on the right fender. And I don't have anything on a hood. This hood's been repainted. It's not the original, unfortunately. Not a big deal to me as long as it's OEM, which I'm sure it is. The grill should also have one of those stickers on it. I think somewhere on the underside here or under here. And the bumper should have one of those stickers on it right underneath the grill here somewhere, which I don't think this car has. I believe the, the front grill, bumper, and hood were replaced. Okay, the other VIN you're looking for is right there on the engine block. And it should match all the other VINs. This number here on the on the on the engine block stamp below. Uh, I'm unsure as to what that is. I don't think it corresponds to the VIN, uh, but don't quote me on that. You'll also find other markings like this here. Um, you can just faintly see it. It says S4. And then if you have a C behind that, it means you'll have a limited slip. Okay, also you got the model number for the transmission on a stamp right there. The other thing you're looking for is down here inside the exhaust manifold it should be PR3-3 for the head that means it's a B16 head okay you guys you're gonna need to jack up your car to check the engine's VIN number and it's gonna be right up under here uh, if you have this in place it makes things more difficult so your engine's VIN number is right up here by the exhaust header or exhaust manifold and that's where you'll find your engine's VIN number even this piece of wiring harness uh, had some information on it at one time I don't know if the VIN's included in that so for the EM1 you don't find any um, production information through the VIN number um, there is no sequence to the EM1's VIN number. The way that you find out um, what number your car was off the assembly line is to come right down in here. And we're looking right down there. You see it right down there? That's on the K member just below the battery. It's number 85, you guys. So this EM1 was number 85 off the assembly line in 1999. Now if that's been painted over or erased, I really don't, I'm really unsure of how else you could tell that that's your, what your production sequence number is. Also I noticed 
you notice just above the five on the right, you see that dent there and it's rusted. That's pretty common on these cars and I really have no explanation for that either. But uh, that's your production sequence number. So I just wanted to say a couple more things about the sequence number there on the K member. I also noticed that the other K member I have, it has a number seven on it. And if you kind of look closely, it almost looks like the same style of handwriting. Like the same guy put the number seven on my number seven car as he put on my number 85 car. So just another little interesting tidbit that the actual handwriting appears to be the same so it would have been the same person who labeled every one of those K members so I hope this video saves you guys time uh, that was hours of research and you guys get it all in just about 10 minutes so if you like the video that you just saw please like down below and also subscribe and I just want to say thanks to the people who have already subscribed and liked my videos uh, much appreciated thank you very much